Hi, I'm Kerry and I have always had a really great love of fairy tales and this is why. Now, when I was little, I really, really struggled both to read and to write and that's because I'm dyslexic, which is a very, very long word, but it basically means that you can't recognise letters on the page. So even writing my own name was really, really tricky and reading took years and years but I was very lucky to have two parents, mainly my mum, who read to me every single night. And the stories which I loved the best were the ones that I didn't have to learn by heart. And that's where I think the magic of fairy tales really exists. Because everyone, really, people on a building site, people on the beach, people in a lovely cafe, people in the garden, everyone knows the essence of fairy tales. It's as if they already exist somewhere in the air and we all managed to learn and love them. So when I was little, I really enjoyed play acting, pretending to be Cinderella, forgetting my glass slipper on the stairs, um, or pretending to be Sleeping Beauty, or Red Riding Hood, one of my absolute favorites. And I even had a really gorgeous red cape that I would wear even in the summer. So fairy tales were really important to me because that was how I really became a storyteller. And once I was a storyteller, I wanted to make up my own stories. But of course, writing them down was more difficult. I really believed that I was Alice in Wonderland or Tinkerbell or Wendy from Peter Pan. But then one day when I was at play school, I realized I wasn't quite the same as all of these fairy tale heroines that I really loved and admired. So we were playing a game of Peter Pan and I really wanted to be Wendy, but someone else was already Wendy. So I said, I really want to be Tinkerbell, but someone else was already being Tinkerbell. And then there was this kind of silence and everyone looked at me. And at the time, because I'd been born with one hand, I'd actually been given a rather ugly and fairly useless hook. That's right, an actual hook, a bit like a pirate. So can you guess? who everyone suggested I should be. Who do you think it was? Yes, Captain Hook. Now I was only four years old at that time and I definitely did not want to be a beardy pirate in a pointed hat who was scared of crocodiles. I wanted to be fighting the crocodiles. And I got very cross and I ran away. And then I remembered there is another brilliant girl in Neverland who has feathers in her hair, Tiger Lily. I wanted to be Tiger Lily and I went back to my friends, I said I'm being Tiger Lily and luckily everyone agreed. But really from that moment onwards, all the way through my life, it made me aware that although I loved all of these fairy tale girls, I was in fact a little bit different from them because none of them had a disability or looked quite like me. And that became my motivation to one day tell stories that reflected all children so that everyone could find themselves in a book. Another story which I loved, which wasn't a fairy tale but was equally magical, was a book called Rainbow Bright. She was brilliant and she had a, an amazing horse and all of her friends were different colours of the rainbow and I could just lose myself in her world for ages. So one day my mum went away for the weekend and my lovely dad read me Rainbow Bright, the opening page again and again and again. And by Sunday night, I knew every single word off by heart and I went up to my bedroom, I was about six years old, and I practiced what I thought was reading. So I held the book and I looked at the pictures and I said the words in a lovely clear voice. And then I went downstairs and I said, look dad, I can read. He was so amazed and probably very relieved that the next day when he took me to school, he told my teacher that I could read. She was overjoyed. Everyone was almost in tears with wonder. She made me stand up in front of the class and read the first page. And then she turned the page. And of course, I hadn't learned the second page off by heart. And I just kind of blushed and felt very silly and everyone realised that I couldn't read at all, but I was brilliant at learning lines, which was a great skill many years later when I became a CPB's presenter. But at that moment in time, I was really, really still struggling to become a reader. And fairy tales and storytelling and acting stories out were my motivation with a lot of support from school 
and at home and out of school and pretty much from everyone to me finally at the age of about nine being able to read at long last by myself. I would love to know what's inspired you or your child to pick up a book of their own free will. So not because a teacher's asked them to or a beloved parent is encouraging them to read, uh, but maybe it's because they've seen the film or TV show of that book and they just really want to find out more about those characters. Or perhaps it's the fairy tale that their grandmothers told them and they haven't seen the book before. Or maybe their best friend has read that book and they're really drawn to that front cover and want to find out what did happen to that dragon.